Hi, welcome to another episode in our material design component series. Following on from our overview and why we recommend MDC, today we're going to be giving you a demonstration of material theming. All of the widgets offered by MDC, such as buttons, text fields, fabs, and app bars, use what's known as the baseline theme by default. That is, they'll mostly have a purple and teal color palette, use the Roboto typeface, and have four DP rounded corners. Material theming is the ability to customize these widgets to purposefully deviate from the baseline and align with your brand by adjusting color, type, and shape attributes, all while maintaining their core anatomy and usability. We'll start out by exploring some useful tools on material.io for picking color, type, and shape values. We'll then go through the process of applying these values in your app using themes and styles and see how MDC widgets automatically react to changes. Lastly, we'll take a look at handy utility classes which can help you deal with material theming in some common scenarios. For this episode, we're going to be using an existing project called Build a Material Theme, aka Material Theme Builder. This is an interactive project that lets you create your own material theme by customizing values for color, typography, and shape. Visit material.io slash resources slash build a material theme, and then click here to get the code on GitHub. We're now in the Material Components Android Examples repository. It includes Material Theme Builder, as well as other sample apps that demonstrate MDC, like OWL and Reply. We'll need to clone this repo to our machine. We can then open an existing project in Android Studio using the Material Theme Builder directory. We're now set up with the Material Theme Builder project and have the app running on an emulator. The UI is a visual representation of a material theme in terms of color, typography, and shape. It also showcases most of the widgets available in MDC. Notice that everything is using the baseline theme, purple and teal colors, the Roboto typeface, and rounded corners. There's also a switch to see what your theme looks like in dark theme. We'll see how changing the values of the attributes in our app theme will alter the UI. But first, let's take a look at some tools to help us pick these values. First up, we have a couple tools for picking color values. The material color tool allows us to select primary and secondary colors from a material palette or using custom hex codes get light and dark variants, as well as appropriate on colors, and then preview how these look in sample screens. The material palette generator can generate a full tonal palette, shade 50 to 900 for a color. In our case, we've picked navy for our primary color and green for our secondary color. Next, the Typescale Generator is useful for previewing typescales, integrating with Google Fonts, and exporting code. In our case, we've picked Roboto Mono as our font. Lastly, the Shape Customization tool is for previewing shape categories and how changes apply to the corners of various components. In our case, we've picked cut corners with varying sizes for small, medium, and large component categories. We are now back in Android Studio, having picked theming values using material tools. Let's incorporate these into our Android project. First, let's add our color values as color resources to our existing res color.xml file. We'll name them literally as opposed to semantically as a themes and styles best practice. Next, let's add our type values. I've gone ahead and added Roboto Mono as a downloadable font to our project. You can see more about how to do that in the link in the description. We now need to use this font to update existing text appearance styles in our res type.xml file. Note that we're using different font weights per style. We could override other attributes like text size or letter spacing, but in our case, we're only interested in the font family. Lastly, shape values. We need to update existing shape appearance styles in our res shape.xml file. 
for each category, we'll change the corner family to cut and then apply the corner size that we picked using the shape customization tool. We now have our material theming values in our project as resources. And the last thing we need to do is make sure our app theme is up to date. You'll notice that we have two themes.xml files in our res slash values and res slash values dash night folders with a base material components theme and then an app theme in each. This structure allows us to vary our colors based on whether the app is in light or dark theme, which will be explored in an upcoming episode. For now, we need to change our color, type, and shape attributes. We'll replace our color values with the ones we added to res slash colors.xml. For type and shape, we don't need to actually do anything more as the text appearance and shape appearance styles we edited are already referenced in our theme. So let's rerun our app. We can now clearly see that the UI of our app has changed and has a very different feel, all while retaining the fundamental layouts and anatomy of each widget. Exploring the tabs of Material Theme Builder allows us to preview color, type, and shape values, and also see how MDC widgets have responded to our changes. Flipping the dark theme switch shows our different color palette while maintaining type and shape theming. I'd like to take us through a couple more things using handy MDC utility classes in some common scenarios. Firstly, let's look at how we can resolve theme color attributes programmatically. We'll use the material colors class to get color primary variants. Simply pass in a view for context as well as the color attributes. We can then, for example, apply this to our UI as the hint color of our theme name, which we can then see when we rerun our app. The other thing I'd like to show you is a class called Shapeable Image View. As the name suggests, this is an image view that understands shape theming. Applying circular clips to images for avatars is a common use case, and this class can do just that. In fact, it can apply cut corners and corners of varying sizes too. I've gone ahead and added an additional image item to our component list. Notice we're using a standard image view here with a test image and related attributes like scale type. Let's change this to a shapeable image view. At this moment, nothing will change. However, shapeable image view understands shape theming attributes. So let's add in shape appearance. Reference shape appearance medium component and rerun our app. We now have cut corners that match other components in the medium shape category. But let's go further. We can define a shape appearance overlay, which is somewhat similar to a theme overlay in our res slash shape.xml file. We won't override the corner family, but we'll set corner size to 0 dp, and then corner size top left to 50%. Percentages are useful when you want to adapt to the layout width and height. Back in our layout, we apply this to the shapeable image view using shape appearance overlay. Lastly, let's add in a stroke width and stroke color both of which are supported by Shapeable Image View as well. When we rerun our app, we can see the changes. That's it for today's episode. We saw how adjusting material theming attributes in the Material Components theme of our Material Theme Builder app altered the appearance of MDC widgets in terms of color, type, and shape. We also explored some handy MDC utility classes that help you implement material theming in some common scenarios, such as resolving theme color attributes and applying shape theming to images. In future episodes, we'll explore topics like material dark theme and material motion, so be sure to check those out. If you liked the video, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the Android Developers YouTube channel. Thanks.